All right, I'm on the home stretch now. We're almost moving into q and I'll take 10 minutes on this last one and we'll move into Q&A. Nothing actually changes. This gets disheartening. You feel like the man pulling his hair out. We have retrospective after retrospective after retrospective, but nothing seems to change. What are some of the symptoms? No action items. We talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, but then we don't make up action items coming out of the retrospective. That's gotta be fixed. No follow through. We have action items. There's 10 of them right there, but nothing ever gets done on those action items. How do we get them to follow through with them? Or no improvement. We try things, but we never get any better. It just stays the same. Nothing improves. It's this no change down here. If you're not seeing changes in your team, and you're having regular retrospectives, there's a disconnect that needs to be fixed. Because retrospectives, remember, good conversation by the team, that itself can generate improvements in the team performance, but then one to three experiments to improve the team. Now, maybe you have a stretch of experiments that don't work, don't work, don't work, but eventually you're gonna have one that works really well if you've got the whole team involved in it. So if you're having a string of nothing is getting better, I would say it's broken, and to have an effective retrospective, we need to zoom in and try to fix a few of those elements. So the first thing I'm gonna to recommend to you, invitation. And what I mean by that is invite the team into the process of improvement. Often in business or in large organizations, we're all told what to do. You will do this, you will do that, you will do this. And we simply follow, okay, you said to do it, I'm gonna do it. You said I have to be in here for an hour, I'm gonna be in here for an hour. When you invite people, I wanna invite you to be a part of the conversation. I wanna invite you to help make this team better. I wanna invite you to help solve this problem. What that leads to is if the people take the invitation, that leads to engagement. They are engaged because they've been invited. They're there because they wanna be there. They have opted in to the discussion and the improvement. That leads to buy-in. If, if we were having a retro and you came up with an idea I disagreed with and we said, we'll try it. I don't care, why am I involved? But if I'm there and I'm a part of the conversation and I'm engaged and I helped you co-create that idea, I have some personal interest in it coming to fruition, some personal interest in seeing it succeed. Buy-in leads to action and action should lead to change over time. So you wanna be looking for these things. If you're saying, I don't see any change, nothing's changing. Are you seeing action? If you're not seeing action, ask yourself, am I seeing buy-in? If you're not seeing buy-in, ask yourself, am I seeing engagement? And then ask yourself, if I'm not seeing engagement, where is this coming from? I like this image because sometimes this is our reality. The team member feels like everyone's telling them what to do. Well, if you don't really have a choice in the matter, it gets better, it doesn't get better, it's not really your fault, right? If a leader's idea fails, so if a leader says, hey, you're going to do 10 story points instead of five this sprint. If it fails, what's the problem? The leader was wrong. The leader made a mistake. The leader had a failure. Yeah, failure is okay for the leader. He'll brush it off and be fine. She'll brush it off and be fine. But what if it's your idea? What if it's your plan for improvement? What if it's your pet project that you really think could make a difference but if you try it and it fails, what are the consequences? Hopefully there's not very many. Hopefully you're in a learning organization that encourages failure. Why failure? I'm not saying fail because failure is great. I mean, fail as in we tried an experiment and either we got a positive or a negative result. It either worked or it didn't. But the point is we learned something. And so what I'm saying here is the action items should come from the team they should be generating them because then they'll have buy-in to make them happen. If they have buy-in to make them happen, you're going to get good feedback from those experiments better than if you just told them what to do. As a facilitator, you should never come into a retrospective and say, I know what you need to work on. I saw it this last sprint. If you just go do this, you'll be better. 
Bye, everyone. Good retro. I don't think you'll see very much improvement from that unless you have everyone on the team just being a compliant person because they're really nice and they're afraid of you, right? You want to include the team in the discussion and let their ideas go forward. Now, do you let them have ideas that are absolutely outside of the scope of the team? No, no, no. As a facilitator, your job is to keep them in the proper scope. Let's talk about problems that we can solve. Let's talk about problems that we can improve. Let's talk about problems we can actually influence, right? If your team is led to talk about things they can influence, then they'll have that opportunity to build that buy-in and make sure that failure is an option for them. If they're gonna get punished because they tried an idea and it didn't work, you're not gonna have effective retrospectives at all. One thing I'll tell you about your ideas, action items, passion projects, whatever the other comes out of the retro, make it visible. Don't let the team lose sight of the ideas that they had during the retrospective. Keep them in front of them, keep them visible so the team knows it matters. Visibility matters because it shows the actions matter. If you say, we're gonna try this experiment and then you never talk about it again, the team's gonna go, these experiments don't really matter. But if you bring it up, if you ask one of the team members to own it and hey, bring this up at least three times in the next sprint so we can, remember we said we we're gonna try this experiment. If it's visible, if you bring it up at the next retrospective, then the team will know that it actually matters and it's something that's worth their time and their effort. And the last and most insidious thing that keeps a team from having effective change out of their retrospectives is overwhelm. I'm not going to play these two, but I've got two YouTube video clips here. One is the I Love Lucy. Uh, you, you can just Google I Love Lucy chocolate and you'll find this video. It's all about being overwhelmed with work. And then the resource utilization trap by Crisp Academy also is about being overwhelmed by work. And what's the problem with being overwhelmed? You have great intentions. I know how to improve. We had a great retro. I've got three action items. I'm ready to go. And then someone comes to your desk the next morning and says, I've got a lot more work for you to do. You have to do all these things. And the improvement falls away. If you want an entire frame for looking at ways to improve in the middle of what's commonly called the whirlwind, The Four Disciplines of Execution is a great book. It's The Four Disciplines of Execution. The whole book is about how do you move forward big ideas in the middle of the daily whirlwind that often distracts us from improvement. All right, I have covered a lot of ground there. I hope you found something that resonated with you. If you're still on the mirror board up here in the session feedback, I would love to get some what you love, what you learned. You can put another dot with where you're at in your retrospectives, any other feedback and questions or any answered questions. But I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and let's move into Q&A because I wanna help you where you're at and some of the challenges you may be having if I didn't address them with this presentation earlier. So I'm gonna stop there.